um, it's it's really easy to get overwhelmed when we do trainings a lot of times. And I like you can learn 200 things and not implement one, and it doesn't really make a difference what you learn because you're not putting it into action. And I know this happens at Summit, and this happens all the time when we're in these coach trainings, and it gets way too overwhelming. And then you get, you feel like a hamster in the hamster wheel because you're not really making an impact with what you've learned. So that's the mission of this training. Again, if you're watching the recording since I just started, the One Coach, One Lesson training is starting on Monday. It's going to be awesome. So make sure you ask your coach to add you if you have not been added yet and haven't joined. Um, super excited about that. And then also for those of you watch, watching the recording, go back to Team Drive the Cookie page and watch Carl and Jason's video that Liz live streamed for us on, at Vegas because both of them are phenomenal. So those are the two announcements that I have. And now tonight, I, Liz asked me to talk to you guys about sharing our story and the power of sharing our story. And I'm gonna share with you uh, the brief version of my story and who I am, where I came from. But I also want to give you guys some tangible tips of how you can figure out what your story is and how to share that with people without word vomiting all over them or without sounding super depressed or, you know, without getting jumbled. Or I know some people feel like they don't even have a story to share, which that's not true for one human being, especially who's old enough to be a coach. So... I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that, but I have a question that I want to ask you guys first, and you can type it in the chat box if you want. A couple questions. So why do you think that we get addicted to or drawn into, let's say, a Netflix series? I mean, unless you guys are, like, way above that and nobody watches TV shows. <laughs> okay, storyline, the narrative. It's almost always because of the drama, right? We love the story. Yeah, the suspense. We want to see what's happening next. And, like, we feel like we can kind of maybe in some cases maybe relate to them. Your um, <laughs> probably shows. Yes. It's, it's very entertaining. Okay, so what about – so, okay, we have TV series – and then we have, yeah, Lifetime movies, Hallmark movies this time of year. Oh, my gosh, already. My husband's like, it is not Christmas time, but I don't care because I love the stories. And um, so, so we have that aspect. And then we have all of a sudden in the last, like, what, 10 years has it been that live um, – that reality TV shows have, like, exploded – and people love reality TV shows or have loved reality TV shows because of the story that they tell and the drama that they have and all of that kind of stuff, right? So the reason that I'm asking you this is because when it comes – not that we want to create drama in people's lives. <laughs> we do not want to be that. But – what I'm, tell what I'm trying to express is that that's what draws people in. That's what makes people want to keep watching. And so for you as a coach, for me, for our team, story is so important in what we do because it's really what connects us with people. It's what makes us a real human. It's what um, adds authenticity to who we are. It's, it's what – makes people feel like they can they can reach out and maybe connect with us or maybe that we've been through what they've been through and so they feel like that they that we might have some of the answers that they're looking for. And that's really a huge part of story, right? And the importance of it. So again you can ask yourself, all of you started somewhere, whether you were attracted to your coach or team drop a cookie or beach body, what attracted you? Most likely it wasn't a sales pitch. Like, most likely it wasn't, right? Most likely, like, so for me, what attracted me to Liz, I had no idea who she was at all. I mean, I'm in California. She's on the East Coast. 
And I never had met her before. We had no mutual friends in common. We just were randomly Facebook friends. And um, I saw her before and after pictures after she had Jack and when she was in the test group for 22 Minute Hardcore. And I was about three months postpartum with my son. And her story that she shared, the struggles that she had after she had him, and the insecurities that she felt, and the physical pain that she had, you know, throughout her pregnancy, and all those things I could totally relate with. And to see how she overcame that and her unbelievable mom bod that she had, right? To see how she was able to, to recover after pregnancy, that story is what got me. It wasn't the fact that there was a challenge pack sale or anything like that. It was her story that she shared. And so we have to remember that when we're talking with people or when we're posting on social media, if we're not leading with our story, we're not going to be as effective as we could be. Okay, so a little bit, a little background on me, just so you guys know who I am and why I am really passionate about this whole storytelling thing. Um, so my whole story began when I was younger. When I was 11 years old, on my 11th birthday, I was on a travel softball team. I've always been big into sports and, soft, and softball was, was my thing. And my dad took me on his motorcycle for my birthday and went to practice and had this special daddy-daughter dinner afterwards. And um, on our way home, we were hit by a drunk driver. And we were both knocked unconscious. We were both metaflighted to separate, separate trauma centers in a coma, put on life support, and my poor, <laughs> poor mom got a phone call saying, both of them are not expected to make it through the night. I'm really sorry. And so she had to drive an hour to the hospital, past the accident scene, and decide what hospital she's going to go to, to the love of her life or her daughter. Right. And so that was for me, like I grew up in a very loving family and, you know, very strong morals and, you know, all of that great stuff. But for me, that was kind of like the beginning of when I started to become me, like the authentic me who had to figure out how to walk again and all that. So so we, I obviously, I'm alive today, so obviously I made it. I was in a coma for a week, and um, I slowly came out. Apparently, I was worse. They tell me, I don't really remember much, but they tell me I was worse off than my dad was, but that because I was younger, my body just responded better. And about, I, I was, I completely shattered my left leg. So all the bones, my femur was broken in about five different places. And then both bones in my shin were completely shattered. I've got some really fun scars to, to, to show evidence of that. But um, my leg was up in traction, and I was stuck to a hospital bed, basically. And um, I slowly began to get better. And within about three weeks or so, I was able to go home in a hospital bed. Wasn't able to walk for a year, so I was basically bedridden. But I was able to at least go home. and no significant brain damage although my family did say that they thought that one of my blood transfusions was from the blood of Kramer from Seinfeld because I was a little bit crazy so you know who knows that adds to my authenticity right um okay so about three or four weeks after the accident I will never forget this moment and I'm sure you guys have these moments in your life that are kind of etched in your memory that no matter how much time passes you'll never forget the specific details of what people were wearing or what it smelled like or who came and talked to you first and um, my mom walked in and she looked really sick and she brought my brother into my bedroom and my family came in and then I saw her pastor and I was like this isn't normal and I told her you know mom you look really sick are you okay and she came down and sat my brother down. My brother was five, I think, at the time, five or six. And it was everything that she had to tell us, I need to tell you something. Your, your daddy's got to be with Jesus. And, like, it was really hard to comprehend what that, especially in my brain, like, what that meant 
and what like what exactly happened because in my mind at the time I was thinking like wait a second we were in the same exact motorcycle accident you know I I thought he was getting better and how I thought that I was gonna die too because it didn't make sense to me and so my little brain started started trying to process all this information and you know I still couldn't walk and I had my mom who was grieving and I didn't know what to do with that and then my little brother and our personalities are very different so you know obviously time went on and it got I guess it gets easier with time I think you just learn and grow and process um, about six months later we got his autopsy report back and it unfortunately made things a little bit more difficult it was kind of like he died again because we found out that you know when things like this happen you try to you try to justify it in your head like it was probably better this way because he would have been a vegetable or something like that and he would never would have wanted that life kind of that kind of life he, my dad was six foot seven like he was ginormous like the jolly green giant and so if he wasn't able to take care of his family then he probably wouldn't have been very happy but we found out that his brain function was actually totally fine and it was a malpractice case he had pulled out his feeding tube and the nurse at the time is fourth of july weekend she went to go put a regular tube back in the hole where he pulled out his feeding tube, continued the feeding, and if any of you are in the medical field, you know that's a huge no-no. <laughs> I, I am a nurse now, and you know that you need to call the doctor, and it needs to be x-rayed to make sure that it's going exactly where it needs to be. Well, what happened is it was, the tube went into just the, the space in his abdomen, not into the stomach where it needed to go, and it caused an infection called peritonitis. And so he was coming out of his coma and was in extreme pain. And they just continued to sedate him because they thought, oh, he's just coming out of his coma and he's fine. And that is what ended up killing him. So it was, you know, kind of like a double whammy. I will say, though, like that part of my story and what our family went through and what we learned was kind of huge in, in how my character developed and what my passion became. I was, um, I had four external rods out of my shin for probably about six months, I want to say. I can't remember. It was so long ago. But I loved, like, I begged my doctors to be able to take out my own staples. I had 58 staples on my, um, on my thigh, like a zipper, and I wanted to take them out myself. Like, I loved the medical aspect. And then when I started to understand what had happened with my dad, I started thinking, like, wow, this was totally preventable. Both of the situations that put my family in, in this new reality were totally preventable. A drunk driver and a malpractice case, a nurse that shouldn't have done something that she did. You know, and so I started thinking, well, I want to do something with my life to where I can be with families who go through things like this. And I want, if I can make a difference in one family, then it'll be worth it. And so I decided from when I was 11 years old that I wanted to go in the medical field. I thought I wanted to be a doctor or a nurse. That's what I knew at the time. And fast forward to college, I went to nursing. that's what I went to school for, was to become a registered nurse. And um, so that part of my story is also what really drives me being a coach now. Because that passion that I had when I was younger still is is there to help people and I've just I've, I've come a long way and I've learned a lot to where I I want to be able to be there for people and help prevent people from going through different diseases like lifestyle diseases right which we all know about um, sorry let me see if I can I thought I saw everyone on here I was trying to mute people's lines but oh there we go okay I think we got everybody um so so yeah so that's part of my story right the whole passion for helping people like I know Liz says all the time she's not really into health and fitness but she does it because she knows that's what's gonna be the best for her and her family and she loves helping people in that aspect with the business and everything so for me I'm one of those super health nerds that loves 
that I love talking about nutrition. I love fitness and I love learning about the anatomy and physiology of the body. And that's where part of that came from. So um, there's so many different aspects to my story and I don't want to take up all the time of that. But, you know, that's a huge aspect that I can relate to people with is people who have lost, maybe lost a parent or lost someone close to them. And I know all of you have something like that. Right. So when I went to college, I was like on a mission to do this. I met a Spanish basketball player in college and I ended up graduating thinking I was like doing everything right by the book. We were dated for three years, got married, moved to Spain of all places. Right. And it was, don't get me wrong. It was a, a, a great um, experience. I'm now bilingual, so that's awesome. But I also found myself four, four and a half years after we got married, a divorced 26 year old. And it was one of those things like for me my, and my family, like my faith and my relationship with God's always been like a huge part of my foundation and something that's important to me. So I felt like a huge epic failure. Like, who am I? I like I failed in the one area of my life that I promised that forever I was going to be, you know, no matter what, I was going to be there and I was going to stay married. And, and I did everything that I could on my end to save our marriage, but he just, he was over. I didn't want to be married anymore. Said peace out. And, you know, you can't control other people. And so, um, I didn't know what to do. It was incredibly humbling, I will say. I moved back to California to be with my family. And I remember like praying through that. It, I, I think that more even than my dad dying was one of the worst pains I had felt because it was a rejection. And to be honest, I had always kind of, this is horrible that I was this way, but I'd always kind of judged people who had gotten divorced at some point because I thought, oh, they didn't try hard enough. Oh, well, you know, there is, you know, like it's super arrogant for me to ever have thought that way, but it was very humbling for me to experience it myself. And I, and I remember thinking, okay, I've been through something hard before and I've been able to help people through that. So in this situation, I have to trust, like I have to obviously grieve the situation and learn through it and become stronger and better um, for, you know, maybe a future husband one day. I have to learn from my experience and I have to realize that I need to make it through this so that I can help other people who are going through the same pain because I know what it's like now. And that was really therapeutic for me because it, it kind of drove me to see the positive side of things, to change my perspective, to change how I was going to react to things. And this is the point in my life where I realized no matter what we go through, it could be the worst thing in the world. No matter what we go through, we always have two things we can control. We can always control our perception to what's happening to us how you're perceiving it. Are you perceiving it as the end of the world and this is going to kill you? Or are you perceiving it as, well, this is really shitty, but I'm going to learn from it and, you know, move on. And you're going to, you can control your reaction to it and how you're going to react. This is why you can have two different people have the exact same experience and that lead them down completely different roads in life. So like for me, I, according to our culture, I should have daddy issues. I should have trust issues with men. Um, I should, you know, have all these, all these problems. Um, but I just chose not, uh, that wasn't the, the choice that I wanted to make with my life. Right. And so those, that realization of those two factors I had control of when I felt like my world was falling apart was really powerful for me. Um, and then right after I went through my divorce, I had people out of no out of the blue reach out to me hey I'm going through a divorce right now you've been your posts have been really encouraging um and then I was able to say oh my gosh me too I feel you and I get you to be able to tell someone I know I feel your pain I've been there is so powerful you guys think of it this way if you are looking for let's let's think of a good example if you are looking for 
if you have 200 pounds to lose, this is very dramatic. If you have 200 pounds to lose, are you going to go to someone who's never struggled with weight loss before and has always been naturally super skinny? Or are you going to go to someone who's already lost 200 pounds? Obviously, you're going to go to someone who's been there before because they know the struggles. They get it. And you feel a lot more comfortable with them. And so as a coach, because we're in the life-changing business, you guys, we're not in the challenge group business. We're in the life-changing business. And so being having such a huge mission, a strong mission, um, it's really key to connect with people. And this is how we do it, is through our stories. And there's a time and a place and a right way to, to share that. But this is why it's so powerful for us to be vulnerable. Have you guys noticed, those of you who've shared a vulnerable post before, have you noticed that you get way more feedback from people than like a happy, inspiring post or something that's not really super vulnerable? If you have, maybe post it in the chat or something. Um, because I definitely have. And um, it's incredibly, it's just powerful for us to talk about our struggles with people and what we've learned from those struggles. So for those of you who have maybe been fearful of sharing your story or fearful of sharing your vulnerability, it's time to get over it because people need to hear it. People need to know that you're real and that you're not one of these cookie cutter people on social media that only shares their highlight reel. This is what's going to set us apart from other companies. This is what's going to set us apart from other diets or programs that are out there, right? This is what's going to set us apart from all those companies who only share girls in bikinis thinking that, oh, yeah, this is a slim detox tea that's going to make you lose 50 pounds in two weeks and you're going to look anorexic. And <laughs> that's not what we do, right? We are totally different. We are in the life-changing business. We're in the mindset-changing business, and this is why it lasts. This is why it works in the long run. So those, those two stories really shaped my life. Um, I am now, if you guys didn't know, I am now very close to having our second baby. I got remarried, reconnected with uh, someone that I – that I knew from junior high youth group and we both went through the same story. Again, it was our stories and our struggles that is what connected us back together and what made our, has made our marriage so strong now. And um, one of my favorite things to do is to be able to be real and have authentic conversation with someone who is going through something difficult because it's so powerful, you guys, for us to be able to to reach them in their darkest, deepest um, moments. And we all have the capability of doing that. Even if you've never had something significantly tragic happen in your life, we've all struggled. You all ha are something, right? You're a student or you are a mom or a dad or, you know, you all have some sort of title and life. You all have a life. Like, you all have some sort of life. If you didn't know, you do. Um, and, and in your business, I just really want to encourage you to share more of that versus being only beach body jargon, challenge pack, selling, Shakeology only conversation. It's really powerful for you to lead with who you are as a person, what your vision is, what your mission is, why you're doing it and to attract those people who speak your language attract those people who maybe been through what you've been through or who have you know similar interests or similar titles to you or similar struggles we all have daily struggles unless someone in here has figured out life please let me know maybe type it in the chat box like I actually have it all together, Jessica, and you're totally wrong, but I would love to talk with you. Maybe I'll just mute myself and I'll unmute you because then you can tell us all what this is about. Uh, but from the best, of, the best of my knowledge, nobody has everything figured out, right? We're all trying to figure it out. When I became a parent, it was the first time I figured out, first time I realized, oh, my parents actually didn't know what they were doing when they were raising me. They were totally winging it. Okay, I see. I see now. Okay, so enough about me. I wanted to share with you guys just a few quick tips on 
how to share your story. Um, there's a lot out there on the power of sharing your story, the power of your testimony, which you can always look into. But these are just some some of the, the things that came to the top, top of my mind when I was um, thinking about it. So first, obviously, it's important to know who you are. And that may seem like a really dumb thing to say, but it's hard sometimes to find clarity on who you are and what you represent and and what you want to do with your life. Like, I don't know about you guys, but the first time that I had a call with Liz and she's like, okay, I want you to set, tell me what your goals are for, you know, the next six months, year, five years, whatever. And I thought, oh yeah, no, no problem. And she told me to dream big. And then I, it took me forever. I felt like such an idiot. I was like, how do I not know what I want with my life? But it's really hard to actually get specific and to believe yourself when you're saying, oh yeah, in five years, I think I'd like to, to make bring in a million dollars a year while staying at home. Yeah, and I totally believe myself as while I'm saying this right now. <laughs> you know, it still is a work in progress. But, um, so yeah, you need to get clear on who you are. What is your story? Um, how has, and this can kind of, I'm, sh I'm sure for a lot of you, Beachbody has been a huge part of your transformational story, internal and external. Maybe this is the first time that you started believing in yourself. Maybe this is the first time you've ever done personal development and you're starting to work through things. Um, so that's awesome if it's a part of it. But start to figure out who you are because in order to share what your story is and share with other people who you are, you have to know it yourself, obviously. So maybe spend some quiet time to be authentic and share who you are. Not what other people want you to be, uh, not what you even think you should be, but who you really are. Number two, this is something that I've seen other people do that I want to encourage you to always avoid. So in our journey of being authentic, sometimes it is um, confusing or, or tempting to share only your hardships. I don't know if any of you have seen people be super depressing on Facebook and only share like, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. This is so hard right now. Bye-bye, like the end. Oh my God, like, or pictures of themselves crying, but with nothing else other than this is, this my life sucks and all this. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is wait, <laughs> if you're going through a hard time, you have to be able to know that in order for this to be beneficial for anyone, including yourself, you have to figure out a solution to what you're going through, or you have to see the silver lining on the cloud. And if you don't see that, then don't share it with people until you find out what that is. So for example, if, um, so for me, I work full time in a prison. I've worked in a prison for three and a half years. Ironically enough, it's the same prison that my dad used to work in and uh, it's been a very interesting dynamic. My goal is to get out of prison. So Beachbody is my ticket to paroling and <laughs> it's part of my story. But it's been really hard to grow a business, have a full time, very stressful and negative job raise a toddler, and be very pregnant. That's been hard for me. But if I only shared this is my hardship with people, then people would not be attracted to me. They'd kind of be like, wow, bummer for her. But, you know, maybe she should stop coaching then. Maybe she needs to give something up for it. Instead, I use this as, like, my motivation to get out of that. Or I use this as this is my, okay, why am I working so hard right now? Because eventually, I want to be home with my kids. And this is the power of why that we talk about, right? This is the power of you have to find what motivates you to get up. I usually wake up at 4.30, 4.15 in the morning before I was pregnant. It was to work out. And now it's to do business stuff before work <clears throat> so that I can do both. So I can do everything. Um, and that's just an example. So if I'm posting something... It's this is my motivation to wake up early in the morning. 
instead of having excuses, I'm super excited to be able to do this because I see the long, the, the vision for the long distance. So, um, that number two, always end your struggle with a lesson or with something positive that, that you see from this, something that you've learned. This is why personal development is essential because life is awesome, but it's also really hard sometimes. And it sometimes knocks you off your feet. And if you're not doing personal development consistently, then it's going to be hard sometimes to bounce back and you're not going to feel like it. And this whole coaching thing is not always easy. Like you're going to have people quit all the time. You're going to have people who you thought was your next superstar coach all of a sudden say, I don't, I just don't see it anymore. It's too hard. I'm done. And, and that happens. I remember at um, Summit, at the leadership training I was at, it was Lindsay, I think it was Lindsay Matway said, I think she lost 64 diamonds or something like that, like something crazy. And I can't imagine, but as you get more successful, you're going to get more haters. You're going to get more people saying what you're doing is ridiculous. You're going to lose more successful people, and it's just part of it. The only way that you can continue to grow is through doing constant personal development. So it's really important to be listening to those audiobooks or reading books or watching YouTube videos or whatever it may be for you to continue growing. <coughs> okay. Number three, get over your fear. So how many of you are afraid of sharing your story on a video, for, for instance? Or do you all not struggle with that at all? You guys are super brave and you have it all together. So I'm, I don't know why I'm even talking to you guys. No, I'm teasing. I know that we all struggle with fears at some level, right? And it can be scary talking about personal stuff to the world, right? Social media, the purpose is to reach the world. And, um, I want to encourage you to not think about your fears, but to think about who might be listening and who needs to hear it. Because I guarantee you there are, I mean, we all know there are some really sad, depressed, hopeless people out there who have no idea how to get out of their current situation especially when it comes to weight loss or feeling lonely or maybe they just got divorced or maybe they just lost you know someone really close to them and they don't know what to do with their life anymore and what if they happen to come across your video somehow where you're sharing your personal journey and what you've learned and the struggles that you went through but where you're at now and now your mission is to help those people who've been through something that that you were <clears throat> that, that you've gone through and they see this glimmer of hope and this glimmer of light that, hey, if this person made it through it, maybe I can too, right? Think about that person. What if that person was going to take their life that night? And I don't know, I don't know if you guys have heard these stories, but there are true Beachbody coach testimonials of people who have, coaches who've received messages hey, thank you so much for reaching out. Thank you so much for your video or for your post. I didn't want to live anymore. And I, I read what you had to say, and I decided to put the gun down. Or I decided not to take that bottle of pills because of your story. Like, how freaking powerful is that? Right? And if we let our fears, oh, if we let our fears dictate whether we're going to help someone that's kind of selfish of us, right? And and that's kind of hard. That's kind of, that's hard to grasp, but at the same time, if you visualize that actually happening for you, like you, you, I'm looking at all of you in the eyeballs at the same time. You have a mission on this earth and if you can save one person, then why wouldn't you? Right? So we have to get over our fears, and usually the best way to do that is to think about the power that you could be in someone else's life, and especially in that kind of situation. Also, most people feel fear of failure or what other people think. What happens if you fail at something? Do you die? 
No, usually not. Unless you like fail at breathing, then that's probably not a good thing. But like if you set a huge goal and you fail, you're still going to be alive and you're going to have another day and another chance to make another goal and it's going to be okay, right? If you, if someone sends you a message, like this happens to Liz, I know a lot of you know, and maybe this has happened to you guys. If someone sends you a message like, oh my gosh, um, I can't believe that you think you're skinny and you're doing these workouts because I saw a little bit of love handles in your picture. Really? Like, really? Is that, like, you don't even know this person. These are those stupid people behind their keyboards that are eating Cheetos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and drinking Monsters in order to stay awake and their, like, brain has been altered from the chemicals and that's who you're going to listen to? Like, that's going to be the person that dictates whether you're going to change the world or not? No. That's where we have to do our personal development, right? We have to stay focused on our mission. So no matter what people think or if you fail, who cares? It doesn't matter. It won't kill you. It'll be character development. So don't let that get in your way from putting yourself out there. Okay. Number four. Get emotional, and I don't mean you have to cry. I don't mean that at all. But I mean like, think about the emotions that you feel or that you felt when you went through certain things. Um, and don't be afraid to share that. Like if you felt really lonely at a certain time, or you felt empty, or you didn't know what you're gonna do with your life, or you suffered this huge heartbreak, don't be afraid to share that because that one makes you a real human and not like a robot right? Robots don't have emotions and we do. And other people that we're trying to reach have emotions as well. So they're going to be attracted to those emotions. Just don't be afraid to share that aspect of your life. Okay. And number five, you never end sharing your story. I remember when Liz was really encouraging me in the very beginning to share more of my story and I still have to get better at this. I remember getting all empowered and getting my camera set up right and the lighting and then sharing my story and then being like, whew, I finally did it. And then I was like, okay, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I only got a few likes on that and maybe a couple comments. I thought that would be more powerful, you know? Oh, I have to keep doing it. Oh, I have to keep sharing my story. Oh, it's a, it's a journey. It's a continual process, right? How many times have you guys seen Liz and her videos share her story, like her, her journey and how she first got started and what attracted her to Keith and how she was totally hating on the idea of coaching and she was, she was a huge doubter about it, but she had this weight to lose and so she, she wanted the freedom. Like We all have kind of heard her story multiple times in different aspects and that's what we have to do. Our story is a journey. Every single day is whether, like especially if you're a parent, like every day is an adventure and a new lesson that we learn and a new struggle or a new hardship or a, oh, okay, well, my son just ate concrete, so let's hope that that's okay. <laughs> that was tonight. At least he didn't, you know, fall face first into it, so that was a mom win, right? You know, things like that. We have to share our journeys, and that's what people are attracted to because it's going to encourage them that, oh, I'm not perfect, and she's not perfect, or he's not perfect, so, you know, I could, I could be a part of what they're doing, and that's what makes us real, and can, we, we're, it is also evident to people who maybe follow us for a year before ever saying anything, that we're real about what we're doing, and they can get to watch us grow, and sometimes that's what people need before they reach out and decide to change their life. Okay, and just kind of a bonus point, try to never, on social media, try to always have a point to your posts. Um, this is, it doesn't have to be long, but like something about why you're sharing something. Like, this is a picture of an apple because it's red. Like, you don't really want to do that because you're not really adding value to anyone's life unless they're colorblind and they're like, oh, I didn't know that. My brother's colorblind, so that's why I said that. But maybe you share a picture of an apple because it reminded you of a special memory when you're younger. Or maybe because you want to talk about the difference between organic apples versus non-organic apples and the, I don't know, the nutrient content. 
and that adds value to people, right? And so the way that we add value is through sharing a piece of our story. Don't ever forget that because I see a lot of people who don't practice that and then they're like, I'm posting all the time, but I'm not really getting much feedback. And it's not because, it's because they're not really adding much value to people. Okay, all this to say that our mission as coaches is to get people to join us in the in our vision and our mission and the movement they're creating we want to create a ripple effect throughout the world if we're being honest with ourselves right that should be our mission we not only want to help people but we want to be that leader that empowers other people to have that financial freedom and to have that freedom of their health and to have the energy and and to teach them how to teach more people and in doing so we create a ripple effect around the world. So how do we get people to believe us or to believe or to want to be a part of what we're doing? They have to first believe in you. They have to first connect with you or else they'll never want to follow what you're doing because they don't really know who you are. Why should they believe you, right? You're a stranger to them. And the only way that they're going to be able to kind of grasp that is through your story and this is why we're talking about it and this is why it's so important so if you've been hesitating up until now to share that today is the day now is the time go get them <laughs> okay I'm also a cheesy person if you didn't catch that yet at least Tony and Annalisa are laughing at me Okay, do you guys have any questions or any comments or anything that you want to share or maybe something in this avenue that's maybe helped you that we didn't talk about? You can unmute yourself or a really, really cool comment. comment. I'm getting, I'm getting like, like double, double feedback. feedback. Are you hearing that too? I hear you. Let me put my headphones oh, on. Maybe I'm getting, getting, it's going to drive you crazy, crazy, so I'm just going to okay, hold on. Hold on. Let me put my is that better? Is that, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> I have these song. I'm getting all funny um, noises from my own end now. But anyway, um, totally agree with everything that you said, Jess. Um, and I also think it goes in line with what I'm doing now is um, really honing in on my niche market and I'm in a training for this and I, it's really kind of like this in-depth thing but point being that um, you know the big idea is that if you're trying to speak to everybody you're speaking to nobody so if you're trying to like throw a net out and like bring everybody in it's not gonna work whereas when you share your story like Jess has just laid out perfectly for us when you share that story when you share who you are and your speaking to people who are just like you, your conversion rate is gonna be higher. So you're going to be speaking to fewer people, but more people are going to get on board with you because they are, like just said, you're relatable to them. They trust you. There's something about you that they wanna work with. Whereas if I spoke to somebody that had nothing in common with me, if I spoke to 100 people and like barely any had anything in common with me and my story, my conversion rate is going to be really low. People aren't going to get on board because it could be like, what does she offer that I need in my life? So long story short, um, find your niche market, like figure out, like Jess said, who you are and what you want, what you really think, um, how you can describe yourself and look for those people and talk to those people. And in every single post that you're writing out, you're speaking to that person. Um, and you're going to, you're going to have more connections. Yeah, that was super, super awesome. Very powerful. That was hard for me in the beginning. I have to be honest. I still struggle a little bit with that, but it's so true. Anyone else have any, any other questions or anything else you wanted to add? Anything else you struggle with in this area? Is anyone else scared of doing live videos? You can raise your hand or you can not. Or you can type in the chat box. <laughs> Nobody's scared of anything in this group. That's fantastic. You guys are rock stars. <laughs> okay, so for any, if anyone is, so, okay, so thank you for being honest. Um, okay, so Lori had a great, hopefully I'm saying your name, had a great suggestion. 
And it is something that I was going to tell you too. If you're scared of doing live videos, start by doing them in a, in a group, like start doing them in a challenge group or maybe on your team page if you have one or even a team drop a cookie, like do them in smaller groups so that you get more used to it. Because in the beginning, it's just kind of weird talking to yourself in the computer. Um, but once you figure it out and once you think like, who am I talking to, right? Picture your niche, your niche. I always say that wrong. Niche market, niche, niche, niche. I'll make up my own pronunciation. <laughs> um, market and think like, who do I need to reach right now? Who am I talking to? And then just start talking. And the, the cool thing about live videos is people want to watch live videos because they want to see if you mess up, right? And if you do, who cares? Again, you're not going to die. So that's fantastic news. So um, just remember that and know that the more that you share, the more comfortable that you're going to get. Um, let's see. I missed a couple of these. I'm going to go back and read these. Seda loves, Seda loves live video. That's fantastic. I know. I feel you with not getting people commenting or interacting. I feel like the traction of live videos has gone way down. I don't know why, but it has a little bit. Pick a message first and then go live. Agree. And also make sure that you're happy. Like if you're in a bad mood and you're like, I have to do a live video because it's noon and I said I was going to do it at noon but I'm super grumpy right now. Please do not, please do not do this. <laughs> Cause like people are going to feel your vibe and they're going to be like, wow, she's really happy to be doing what she's doing. Yeah. Don't do that. Like listen to some pump up music or do it right after a workout and you know, do something exciting first so that you're super stoked to talk to people. Even if you're not, you have to pretend. Yay. Smile. Okay. Scared to post that making money from coaching because I don't want them to think that's the only reason I'm doing it. That is a great point. Something I've learned, I've heard a lot and also something I was afraid of in the very beginning. And this is what I would encourage you to think about. Everybody has to make money. Everybody. There's nothing wrong with making money. That's why people go to work, right? We don't go to the grocery store and be like, I cannot believe that you are bagging my groceries only because you get paid right? Like that would be weird. So in our line of work and what we do, this is what's awesome. People don't pay us a penny. Like, okay. So I used to have my own health coaching business before Beachbody where I would have to charge people for my time. And it was my weakest area because I, I felt so weird about charging people to do what I love to do. Right. But I did because people also have to value the time and value the information and actually put investment into it. So as coaches through Beachbody, we're helping them for free. And all they have to do is invest in the tools that are going to make the things work that we're telling them to do. The company pays us. And so it's like the best situation in the whole entire world when it comes to money. So don't feel bad about that. And then also, if you don't talk about the money part, which granted, you have to do it with class and you have to make sure that's not the driving, driving force, but that's the conversation that's probably going to get a lot of your business builders to talk to you is, Hey, I didn't even know it was possible to do this. I didn't know it was possible to drink chocolate milkshakes and work out and help people and be super happy from home and travel the world and get paid a lot of money to do that. Like that sounds too good to be true, but it's not. And that's when you can start talking to them about the business aspect. So just make sure that you lead with, you know, our mission first is a non-finance. This is one of the things in um, the video, Jason, I hope that's his right name. My pregnancy brain is crazy. <coughs> Jason, I think in his vid video talks about having a non-financial driving force behind your company or your mission, and that is what makes you financially successful. And so that was a really good point. So go back and watch that video, that was really good. Um, and you're scared because of your accent and say something you can't take back, it's totally okay. I think your accent's awesome. I don't even know what kind of accent you have, but whatever kind of accent it is, it's super awesome. And that's what's gonna make you you and attract people to you. And people are going to be like, oh my gosh, I love your accent. I guarantee you. 
again, people love accents. So I think that's a positive part of you and what makes you you. And I think you should definitely own that. A French one, who does not love a French accent? I mean, let's be honest. Everybody loves a French accent. So I think you should own that. That should be a reason why you actually do live videos is so people can just listen to you and, and they'll be like calmer afterwards. <laughs> it's like soothing. So that's fantastic. I think you should definitely. Definitely go with that one. Yes, everybody loves a French accent. Okay, anything else? Stephanie, I saw you raise your hand. I didn't know if you wanted to say something. No? Okay. You were just raising your hand like, yes, I'm with you. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so my challenge to all of you is tomorrow, tonight or tomorrow, I know it's late for most of you are on the East Coast, I think. Um, so tomorrow I want you to do something unique that's going to make you stand out with your story. What's maybe think of three times in your life that have been kind of like game changer moments for you, or even one time in your life, if that's too overwhelming for you. And I want you to find a way to share that with someone, whether it's through a live video or through a post or a blog post or a picture, be authentic. Remember to end with like a lesson that you've learned through it and why you're passionate about helping other people through what you've been through or why you're passionate about helping other people um, through the experiences that you've had. You know, why is this important to you? And if this is a hard thing for you to do, then you definitely do some journaling and write down why you're in this. Why did you ever start? And what kind of impact do you really want to have in the world? Because we have the potential to have an incredible impact, but we have to do the work. And we have to do the personal growth with it. It's uncomfortable, but it's freaking awesome. So that's all I got, you guys. Thank you so much for everybody being on the call tonight. It's been so fun talking with you guys. And I will see you guys on Team Drop a Cookie page. Don't forget about our training starting Monday. And for our um, one, that's just what I said. And don't forget about the videos to go back and watch from Carl and Jason. Okay. Good night, you guys. Have an amazing evening. Talk to you later.